can download the arts in the video for free, link in the description. For custom signals in Godot, you can define a custom signal by writing signal, followed by the name of the signal. Additionally, you can add arguments or data that you can carry along with the signal by putting brackets and then the name of the different variables that you want to carry along with the signal. This is similar to calling and creating custom functions in Godot, and you can have certain functions activate when the signal is emitted by grabbing that signal using the connect function and passing the function that you want to connect to the signal. You can also disconnect the signal in the same way, instead writing disconnect rather than connect. Then to activate the signal, call the emit signal function followed by the name of the signal. And if you have any data that you want to carry along with the signal, then make sure to put that here as well. Now in the case that a function that you are connecting to has less built-in variables or arguments compared to the amount of arguments that the signal is bringing, then there are two ways to avoid those extra arguments. The first is when you connect the signal to the function, you can use dot unbind, then passing the number of arguments that you want to ignore from the signal. So if my function only has the float and ball, but no third argument, which is a string, and I want to remove this third argument from being connected to the function, then I can write unbind one. Keep in mind though that unbind removes the amount of arguments written in the brackets, starting from the right going to the left. So in the case that I wrote a two, then argument two and argument three from my signal would be ignored whenever the signal emits and this specific function is called. Now an alternate way of removing or ignoring arguments, which is useful in the case of your function only wants argument one and argument three, but not argument two, which is a bool, and also in the middle, meaning that it can't be removed with unbind. Then when we connect the signal to the function, we can instead connect it to a temporary function that has all three arguments. And as for the code for the temporary function, we would just make it activate the custom function that I want to run whenever the signal emits. And here is where we can then choose what arguments we want and don't want, which we only want the first and last. Keep in mind that the name doesn't matter, so I use ABC to keep the code cleaner and smaller. Additionally, if you don't want the line to be yellow, it is because we are not using the second argument, but to remove the yellow, simply add an underscore next to B or any argument that you are not using and passing to the custom function. Now, an example of using a custom signal can be found inside of this simple 2D platformer game. Inside my player's script, I have a signal and a variable that will be needed for this example. The signal is for when the player gets damaged and it will carry a value of the amount of health that the player now has. And the health variable is the amount of health that the player currently has. I will then have a custom function called take damage, which will have a built-in variable for the amount of damage to take, which I then minus equal from health. And then I emit the player damage signal, passing their new health. Then inside of my spike hazard script, when the player collides with the spike, I simply grab the colliding body or the player, call the take damage function we just looked at, passing a total damage of one. Now, in addition to this basic setup that we have, I also have a UI node that holds the player's health bar. And I have a camera 2D with a script that has a screen shake effect that I want to activate whenever the player takes damage. Inside the UI node, inside the built and ready function, I will grab the player node, their player damage signal, and I will connect it to a custom function, which this custom function will simply just update the value of the progress bar. Although in your game, if you were just connecting to a function for the sake of a single line of code, then you could remove that custom function. And then when you connect inside the ready function, connect to a temporary function that has code that simply updates the value of the progress bar or health bar. Although for the sake of this tutorial, I will simply keep it as is. Then inside of the camera that has a screen shake effect, inside the built and ready function, I will do similar code to the UI, grabbing the player node, their player damage signal, and connecting it to the screen shake function. And I will also use unbind one to remove the argument because we don't need to know the player's new health. Now, whenever the player takes damage and their take damage function runs, their health bar will update and the camera will activate its screen shake effect. Now, alternatively, inside of the player's take damage function, rather than using a custom signal and emitting it, you could instead choose to grab those two nodes and call their functions directly. However, we chose to emit a signal rather than grabbing these nodes. This choice can be due to two reasons. The first is the simplicity of the player script and simplifying what nodes it has connections to. Most likely, your player script will be large and storing connections to various nodes and activating specific functions inside of a large game can be very unwieldy. Additionally, if there are multiple places inside the player script where you are grabbing specific nodes and then activating the same functions, you could simplify those various lines of code by one line of code that just emits a signal, causing those nodes to have their own written logic for how to react to specific moments inside the player script, which by using a custom signal, all these connections will be very easy to find, as it will always be in the nodes ready function, making it easy to check if a connection to a signal exists, or if the right connection is connected to the right signal. This then leads into the second reason, which is instances and scenarios where nodes do and don't exist inside the scene tree. Because the player simply just emits a signal and doesn't directly grab any nodes, all the function calling is done from within the script of those various nodes, meaning that if you have a node that may or may not be inside the scene tree at all times, like a bunch of bullets that you spawn in, or if you have various nodes that you want to activate specific functions on when a signal is called, like removing all the bullets when a cutscene activates, then emitting a signal will allow for that, without the player having to check if each bullet node exists, and the player also won't need to iterate through every single bullet in the scene tree just to activate a single function on each, as the player's signal and the bullet's independent connection to that signal will sort that all out while keeping the code relatively clean and easy to read. Now you have an example of using a custom signal, and some use cases of that custom signal. You can add to any of your Godot games, and don't forget, then check out the project files, link in the description.